Welcome to the Geek Easy. Sit back, grab a libation of your choice, and relax, because it's time to do some geek stuff in the Geek Easy. <laughs> Welcome to the Geek Easy, fellow geeks. Grab a beverage of your choice because today we will be reviewing this monster of an omnibus The Death and Return of Superman. Published by Da DC and written by. A variety of different people. Um, I have to say, you know, I'm old enough to remember when this event happened. I even had, you know, an issue of number. I read the initial event, uh, you know, the death. I had a couple of cop couple of copies of the of the issue seventy five. One of them was a black poly bag. But once that happened, I said, you know, I didn't read anymore. You know, cause I was a really big fan of the initial uh, run, you know, starting out with uh, John Byrne. Loved that, loved that. But, you know, uh, but I never did read Funeral for a Friend. Uh, nor did I read Reign of the Superman. So, you know, I've never really, was never really, I mean, I'm, I was aware, obviously, of what happened. But, uh, I figured I was able to get the sheep and, uh, finally get caught up on it. But I have to say, this, this, like I said earlier, is a beast of a book. The death of Superman part, you know, the, the first part, you know, the uh, death is, excuse me, pretty, pretty cool. I mean, it goes at a good clip, you know, they just, it starts out with uh, Doomsday beating his way out of the ground and it go, and it's just pretty much nonstop action. To the point where they, spoiler alert, die. It's in the title, I can say that. Uh, and, you know, it was, it was done pretty well. You know, I just, I don't see, you know, why, if it, if it was taking that long, why they didn't get some of the, the, Justice League or whatever didn't get some of the bigger hitters out there. But, you know, you can say it still didn't work, but uh, cool. Uh, I mean, that that was really a fun thing. Funeral for a friend is... That's where it starts getting a little bit... Uh, what do I, how do I put this? Stretchy. I mean, the, I like what they're doing. You know, the, there's, I didn't say sketchy, I said stretchy. I'll, I'll get to that here in a second. Uh, I like, you know, how they're covering this because, you know, there's, there's going to be power plays involved with the different, you know, so you have Cam that's trying to move in, you have the superheroes wanting stuff done, you have you know, all these different organizations and their motives getting involved. Um, you know, it's, I like how they kind of covered that. But they're also just throwing in little bits and pieces that uh, could have just been dropped. Not many, just a couple here. Uh, then you get 
to what takes up the majority of the book. Reign of a Superman. This is an epic in and of itself. I mean, it's just, there's so much material in there. And, you know, hey, I'm great. I'm wonderful with having a lot of material on something. But as is the case with a lot of these, you know, event books. And it happens more in some and less than others. They have a tendency to put a bunch of, uh, put an amount of material in there that shouldn't be in there. It's like filler stuff, and there's absolutely really no reason for it. It seems like it's just there for filler. Um, like in here, in in, in uh, Reign of Superman, there is a subplot that covers a, a multitude of issues. You know, some of them, some of that part that takes up, you know, it is the main focus of some of these issues. Other parts is in, you know, minor parts in some of the issues about these alien parasites, <coughs> excuse me, that are uh, killing people to drink their spinal fluid, to eat their spinal fluid. That's how they subsist. And it even creates two new superheroes uh, in the process. This has nothing to do with the return of the Rand of Superman other than, you know, it's just every once in a while you get, you know, uh, Man of Steel, uh, uh, John, <laughs> Henry Irons, uh, or the clone, the clone fighting him. But, you know, they, that's the only reason they put him in there is because they could have them fight it. It didn't have anything to do with the main story. Uh, there's a, a guy who Lois knew in the past who comes back and he's uh, oh well Clark's dead well God, I'm going to come in and I'm going to uh, I'm going to start trying to take Lois back and stuff like that that really didn't need to be in there just extraneous and then there's one there's a couple things that I thought okay why is this in here but then they answered that later in the in the book and like there's there's a few pages that they had in there. It's someone who was a uh, one of the characters who's calling Lois or something like that, and she's saying that uh, Diana called looking for help, as in Green Green Arrow's uh, girlfriend. I think she was a girlfriend at the time. I don't know if they were married or yet. Uh, Green Lantern. I mean Green Arrow was kidnapped, and it's my fault. I'm looking for help. That's the only thing you hear about it. You don't, you don't see what happens in any other part of the book, and you see Green Arrow in the background. So, why is this in this book, and then nothing happens about it? I mean, it's just stuff. It, to me, it was just sort of like they're minor, but they're kind of a distraction. You know what I mean? But you know, that's just. But overall, I mean, this is a really good book uh, it's filled with 90s goodness in the storylines and stuff you know you got <laughs> you got uh, Superboy or it doesn't like being called Superboy You have the clone hitting on anything that moves. And they've got kind of a recurring joke in there where he keeps, you know, 
saying stuff to uh, Maggie, the Maggie Sawyer, the chief. She's an inspector now. Like the, the come on. <laughs> she keeps saying, you're not my type. I don't know if she was out of the closet at that point or they even really intended to make her gay at that point. But knowing that, you know, that's the case, that, you know, she was, that was pretty damn funny. <laughs> A running gag. You're not my type. You're not my type. Uh, but anyway, uh, I I am so glad that I got this, even though it's, you know, picking it up to read every day. I read when I did it is work for being arm day. Uh, oh, and it does have my favorite Green Lantern in it, Guy Gardner. Uh, I'm glad that I got it. It was a really fun read and was worth the, the money that I paid for it. So I'm going to give it uh, 4.25 out of 5. And say, get it. I mean, if you if you read this stuff before, you should have it. If you haven't read it, you should have it. This way, you you know, it's, it's one of those things you you should know about with DC history and all that. So anyway, let me know in the comments below what you think or what you thought of the book, uh, whether they were in floppies or in the omnibus. And like, subscribe, most of all. Enjoy your.